This video is intended to describe the workflow that I'm using in Linux, Mint, running under Oracle's Virtual Manager Virtual Box. There's four windows you see here running under Virtual Box. The first one is a text editor. And in that text editor, I have the source file. In this case, it's testing external RAM to the FPGA card. The second window is showing the list file that's generated by the assembler. This is all assembly code. Fairly simple. It writes a value to a location, reads it back and makes sure it was good, and then writes the complement of that value. And the list file shows that it is correct and matches the source file for what I'd like to have. Here's the make file. It's making a S record file as the final output. And along the way, it makes takes the object file that was generated by the assembler and makes a bin file. And then it takes that bin binary file and makes an S record out of it. And there's a clean make all, which will do all the chain except for the clean. And if you do make clean, it'll make the clean. The next window over here is the assemble window and it's terminal. If you do make clean. It'll remove all the object files that were created and leaves the source file. It leaves the make file. And if you do make all, it will make those output files. If you go back to the list file, it'll tell you that it changed. Of course, it didn't really change because we're just reassembling the same thing, but it knew that the file had some right to it. The middle window I used to transfer to GitHub. So I'm checking all of the code into GitHub when I do it. So I do a git add dot to add the code. I do a git commit and I'll put adding stuff here as the, as the commit comment. And then I will do a git push. It's already up there so there was really nothing to push. And that completes the Linux side of the build. And I then transfer over to the PC and upload the S record that was created. You can see that S record file here as well. It's been chopped down just to be the piece of code that runs. And it doesn't have all the extra stuff in it that was created in the other intermediate files. But it looks correct. On the PC side, I also have four windows open. The upper left window here is my GitHub desktop. I've already hit fetch origin, but if you do it, it'll grab the files out of the Git. The window here is a serial terminal connection to the card that has the 68,000 FPGA on it. This window is a text editor that's showing the same text file as in the other window. If I had just loaded a new one and I went into the text window here in Notepad++, it would have come back and told me that the file had changed, do I want to reload, and so I could. The second window down is the same list file that comes out of the same place, and you can see the code matches the other code. Put that down and make it a little bit bigger. It's the same code that was over in the Linux box side. And in the bottom corner is a directory that shows those same files. To do an upload, I just grab the list file here, copy it. I go over to the terminal keyboard, the keyboard that's attached to the 68000. It's a PS2 keyboard in this case. And I type LO for load. And I hit enter. And then I right click over here and it drops it up onto the card. Now, for some reason, it's not exiting and I have to hit the reset button on the card. But when I do that, it loaded and it's there. If I do a MD, it's running Tutor, which is a debugger, and it starts at 1000, and I'll dump out 32, and I'll do a disassembly, and I can see that the code has been transferred across. And here's the disassembly of the code on the terminal that's generated inside of the FPGA of the 68000 card. Inside of Tutor, I can set the PC with dot 
PC program starts at a thousand. And I can trace starting at that address. If you just hit enter, it continues to trace single steps through the code. You can see the D0 getting loaded and then the D1 getting loaded, and now it's going to compare. And it's going to branch if they're different to 1028. They're the same, so it's going to now try AA, putting that into D0, which it just did. Now it's going to load it, and it loaded 55. Five. Ah, it didn't do the uh, read yet. So now it's going to do the read, and it read the AA. So it's wrote out AA and read back AA. First time it read it, wrote out 55 five and read back 55. Five. So the code is working correctly. It didn't branch to 1028, which shows that it's continuing the run. And that pretty much shows it works. End to end. A little bit clunky, but it does the job. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products, and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.